Hey guys, welcome to another YouTube video um, and, and another season review on a uh, on an eliminated final on, on an eliminated finalist. This one is on the Fremantle Football Club. Um, so let's get, of course, straight into it as usual. Um, so last year, uh, of course, Fremantle. I mean, I mean, they ha they were in contention for finals for most of the year, but unfortunately, they didn't quite, um, yeah, yeah, didn't quite take their chances, and unfortunately, they ended up fell falling short of that with eleventh with ten wins for the season. This year, they 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 did not miss their chance. They really did uh, have a fa they had a fantastic season, um, finishing fifth on the home and away ladder with fifteen wins for the season. Um, with 15 wins for the season and the one draw, which was against Richmond, um, and and then of and then of course in the finals they uh, they won, you know, that, that that absolute fantastic game in Perth when they came back from 41 points down to win that one by two goals, and then unfortunately of course it, 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 they got it, they got eliminated by Collingwood in the second week of the finals. Um, which it we uh, which was uh, uh, which was not a surprise considering that there were there was basically uh, uh, there was there was ninety thousand people there at the MCG that night and mo I think it was about about eighty uh, eighty eighty eight to eighty nine thousand of those out of those fans were basically calling supporters so 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 yeah so there was no way in hell that 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 free men were gonna uh, upset the Collingwood army and that in that case. Um, so, uh, so, yeah, um, so, the highlights of the season, um, the first one, obviously, was the round 11 win, um, against Melbourne, that undoubtedly broke, uh, that broke, uh, Melbourne's winning streak that went from, that went, went through, including the grand, winning the grand final, and then, obviously, the first 10 games of this year, um, with the first ten games of this year, um, which which was at the time was an absolute shock. I mean, I, I mean, I mean, um, Melbourne they were they were in front by I think I think they were in front, but I can't remember. I think it was by about four goals or so, three or four goals at at half time. We all thought maybe that, that maybe Melbourne it's going to be another win for them, maybe an eleven out of eleven. But then, but then. The Dockers came storming home in the second half to run over the top of them to yeah, to win that one to win that one by almost by the exact same margin in the end, or even more than that. I think it was by about five goals, as well. So so that was it was it was massive, um. For it it, it, it was massive really for Fremantle in the context of their season and and that was the pro, pretty much the start of uh, at Melbourne going downhill. Uh, really, with with their with their home and away season, and the other highlight for me, as, as I just said, it was the elimination final again against the Dogs. That has to be the great the greatest win in the club in the club's history because it has to be it has to be high up there, be, uh, way up there, in terms of the greatest lead, the wins that the club's ever had. I mean, forty one points down, and they want uh, that. Uh, 41 points down in front of a packed house at Optus Stadium. It was about, it was a free, I think it was a Fremantle record, uh, at record home crowd. It was about fi almost 59,000 people that were there. It was almost, a, it was almost a full house at Optus Stadium. And they came back, like, it came back, it came home like a steam train and basically were at the top of the dogs in the second half, in the set, well, in, from, from, from the, from the last, like ten minutes in the, from the, in the second quarter, and they and they just went on and on and on from there, and and basically won them the game. Really, uh, unfortunately, those efforts were stuffed out the next week. But but I think it is the best. It is probably it has to be out there in terms of the best win that Fremantle has ever had in its history. Um, it, 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 the low light for the, the low light for the season. Um, I think it has to be their round round nine loss against the Gold Coast Suns as well. Nobody expected that to happen 
for, for the Dockers to basically be shut out like they did. At one stage, it almost looked like they were gonna, they were going to lose by by ten goals or something. At one stage, I think they, I think on Gold Coast up like, what was it fifty point lead, but the, but the goal but but Fremantle scored a couple of late consolation goals in the end. But that that there was there was a couple of games really that really did. And I think this game really. I, th I think it, 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 this was a game that really. Did, it, this was one of those games that really they expected to win, and needed to and needed to. Uh, lo like I said about the Bulldogs a couple a couple of reviews ago, that it, when they won against GWS and Hawthorne, that it, that those were ugly wins, but it, it, but they they were wins that they needed. It, it, this this was a win that they need that Frio needed to be in, to be, to get the top to get a top four finish. And they didn't, and they didn't, and they and they ultimately ruined that at the end of the season. Um, I know, I know there was the performance against Melbourne that, and other performances, but I think this is the this is the real one. I think that cost them a top four finish because ultimately it cost the Gold Coast Suns. And even though they did they did improve this year, as I said in in, in my review of them, um, but but there was that was a game they really expected to win to a last degree, really. Um, Marking them out of ten, um, I've actually given them a a seven and a half out of ten, uh, which uh, which labelled them as a fantastic season. I mean, I mean, uh, I mean even though Justin Longmuir said after the uh, semi final loss, they said, "Oh, it's been a good season. It's not a great season." I disagree with him on that. I think it's a great it's a great season. I think nobody expect we we all probably expect them to challenge for the top eight. But we weren't expecting them to challenge for the top four for our entire season, and they 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 pretty much did do that. Um, which which is a diamond on them. And, and if and if their luck was a bit better, um, in some games that they lost, that they lost probably uh, probably they would be fight fighting it. Out. And at one stage, we we probably could see them to be uh, maybe having a double chance and a home final as well in, in the top two. In the top, I mean, in the top two. But unfortunately, that didn't happen. In the end, um, so yeah, so I think seven and a half out of ten. I think it's a, I think it's a great season for for Freeman, and, and that's a, a stepping stone to 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 future success for for Freeman, and hopefully at, at, at some stage in the near future, hopefully get the club's first premiership. I think it's been long in the making, and, and I think and I think they, I have confidence that they can do that under Justin Longmuir. I think. Long you are. I think I think um, Justin has got has got the potential. Has got the potential to be has ha always had the potential of potentially becoming a Premiership coach, and I think I hope that he does that with his beloved Frio um, at some point. Um, the players um, for uh, the players first off, um, of course, the first one uh, 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 there's. Uh, uh, the first one, obviously, is going to be Andy uh, Andrew Brayshaw. I mean, Andy Andy has had has had a fantastic season. Um, high up there in the brown low. Um, uh, 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 yeah, even I tipped him at some stage to probably win the brown low, uh, but unfortunately didn't get it. I mean, stats really do show themselves that he uh, that he had uh, that uh, that he's had a fantastic season. I mean, he's averaged. Um, uh, under twenty nine and a half touches a game, um, uh, so, uh, and he, in he's elite in that in that category, um, averaging close to fifteen kicks a game. Um, he's he's a bit average in terms of contested possessions and and, and the clearances. Uh, he's he's above he's above average on, on the meters gained and, and and so too, in terms of scoring ball, which is averaging close to six six scoring ball wins per game. On, on that front, and I, and I think if, if he does, it, I think I'm really expecting him to really hit him and the next guy. I'm gonna talk. I'm gonna talk about. Hopefully, they go to the next level. Um, into in terms of them, and I think that Andy Brayshaw will will, will it, 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 it's 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 gonna be a no brainer that he's going to be Frio's next captain. It, it, it's it's a no brainer really that he's gonna be. The next skipper uh, when uh, Eber Nat Fife um, relinquishes, relinquishes the captaincy. I think I've said that right. Um, the captaincy or retires. Um, he he will be the next captain. Uh, no doubt about it. Uh, no, no, no doubt about it. 
Um, our, our thing, if he, our thing, if he performs the same way as he did, he'll be, he'll be high up there in terms of the brown lane next year again, and so on, and so on, and so forth. Really, um, but then on next guy I'm going to talk about is of course is Brayshaw's, you know, you know midfield, midfield partner in a lot of ways in Caleb Sarong. Um, he. He really has had, I think he's he really has had he's had a good he's had a, a great a great season. I think the upward his progression from when he from when he won the Rising Star in twenty twenty to and then of course in twenty twenty one and then and then now obviously in twenty twenty two and then obviously he was probably one of he was probably equal to Brayshaw Freo's best play at one of uh, the Dockers best players in the in the two finals games that they did. In the, in the elimination final against um, the dogs, and then and then the semi and then the semi final loss to the pies. I think they, he he and uh, Brent Brayshaw and Sarong were definitely the two best players in that. Um, I, I mean, I, I mean he, he, the stats show show here show here. I mean, and he, his final form. Caleb Sarong was just unbelievable. You can you can tell by these stats that he that he is that he he is a he is a player built for finals. You can you can tell by this. Here. Judging by these stat, judging by these out of these world stats. So I mean, throughout the twenty twenty two home and away season, he averaged twenty six point four points per game in finals, thirty three and a half disposals a game. Uh, an unbelievable jump. From home and away season to finals, contested possessions eleven point eleven point six per game in, in the home and away season. In in, in final in in the final series sixteen, even though it's two matches, but still, it's, but but still, I don't give a stuff. Don't give a stuff. Um, kicks twelve point four per game in home and away finals seventeen point five. Uh, uh, again, another mighty jump. Uh, clear, uh, clearance, uh, uh, this uh, clearances five point five, uh, uh, five point five per game in home in the home and away season. Final series seven point five. <laughs> Me, uh, uh, meters, uh, meters gained three uh, three uh, hundred seven point one, which is which is which is average in term, in, in 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 that category. Um, in, in in the whole home and away season, uh, in 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 the final series, three hundred and seventy six, and 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 then the only and then the only one where, where he's dropped where he's dropped has been the score involvements. He's, he averaged five point one in home in the home and away season, but uh, but he dropped to three point five three and a half um, score involvements per game in the two finals, um, which if if he if he if Sarong, if Caleb Sarong can can produce this sort of form he had in these two final series into a whole home and away season, I know that it's not going to be easy to do. But but if he does, then the Fremantle might just not have one, one player might be contending for the Brownlow. It could have two potentially be going going for the going for the Brownlow. Um, Going for the brown low. I know. I think for me this year, Andy Brayshaw had his turn at basically having his real breakout season. You know, it, you know, it being close in the brown line and all that. I think next year, if Sarong get it has the pre, it gets a it has in, it gets a fantastic preseason in, and produces this sort of form that he did in the two final series. Then no, no doubt that he, that it will be his turn to have that real breakout season in the midfield. Definitely. Um, Especially now, now that with Mundy retired, Fife is not is not going to be in. You know, going to be not, probably not going to be playing much in the midfield anymore. Walt is not going to be playing much in the midfield anymore. Um, it's probably it's mostly it's going to go down to it's probably it's going to be f fully focused on um Brayshaw and Sarong really, um and, and, and really and and, and I. Uh, and I do get, and I know that they're interested, in, majorly interested in getting Luke Jackson in. Um, apparently, apparently as a midfielder, apparently, which is just going to be strange. But yeah, but but I think 
I think those two in particular, I think in Sarong and Brayshaw, I believe they will be, they will be, they will be ones to watch for for Fremantle definitely in in this season, and and one and an unexpected uh, uh, midfielder that that complements those two, uh, make it makes it a, a a real a real triple threat really for for Frio, has been the rise of in the rise of, of Will Brody. I think um. I mean, he's gone from having played only 25 games, what was it, five seasons at the Gold Coast Suns. Um, and, 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 we all, we all, and I've I've heard instantly that Essendon were targeting him for years, but unfortunately that didn't happen. Freeman picked him up. And, and his form and his form was just outstanding. Was just outstanding. For, for someone who, who, who hasn't, you know, played as much. He, he did play. He played all every single game this season. I mean, that is a that is a big story in, it, in itself. In itself, really, that he's played every single game for Fremantle this year, coming off the back of of a of, of a spell of twenty five games in five years for for um for uh, for the Gold Coast Suns. Um, the stats show in twenty six point twenty six point eight touches per game, twelve contested possessions per game. Uh, Eleven point four ki- kicks per game, five point seven, uh, five point seven clearance, uh, 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 seven clearances per game, three hundred fifteen, uh, fifth, uh, fifth, uh, close to three hundred sixteen um, uh, 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 meters gained per game, and five point two, uh, five point two score involvements per game. Um, so, uh, so yeah, so. I think I think he he's not at the level in terms of Brayshaw and Sarong really. I think he's about a, about a level of, a level below them. But I think if he gets another preseason in, another fantastic preseason in, um, then he he could really complement those those uh, those two in Brayshaw and Sarong really, and um and and and, and if and if that happens, then then that midfield's going to be a massive handful. I mean, um, you have. Um, I mean, you have inside midfielders in, in, in Sarong, Brody, and Brayshaw. Um, with the Ruck Stocks in, in the middle, I mean, Darcy it, it got Sean, they already got Sean Darcy and 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 Lob that could that can that can uh, that can Ruck. But and then if you add in Luke Jackson to that list, then that then that's that that uh, the middle part of the ground is just going to be a handful really for most teams that are going to play against Fremantle next year. That is if Jackson does go to does go to Fremantle, which is looking ever more likely. Um, under pressure, I I've put this on um on Frio's forward line. I mean, don't get me wrong, their def- their, their midfield's been great. Their 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 defense their def- their back line's been great been great all year. Um. I, mean, I think def- I think in terms of defense, I think they're second only to Melbourne, I believe, which it, which is great for them. But the only problem I've got is their forward line. They they um I mean I mean uh, I mean in ter- in ter- uh, 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 that they haven't uh, uh, in terms of uh, of of scoring goals that they're, they're they're sort of mid t- uh, mid ladder sort of sort of a team in terms of scoring. Um, I mean, I mean, Lob, Lob uh, led the goal kicking with thirty six goals, and, and then the next two, and then the next three after that was was Schultz, Schultz Frederick, and Walters are all basically medium sized midfielders or forwards. Uh, Eva uh, is Walter in Walters' case a medium a, a medium sized forward that goes into the midfield half the time. Or or in Schultz and um, Frederick's case, a, a a a fast small forward. The and the next best key forward after Lob is Tabata with only twenty three, and he missed and he missed most of the season. So uh, so that is a bit of a problem. And, and Tabata only played the run bit at one great game anyway, which is when he kicked seventy against Essendon. So uh, so. That is their main problem, and I have a concern that getting in Luke Jackson is not enough. Um, 
I can really do see them see them do a bit too cocky and just go, oh, we we'll just gave Lou Jackson and then that's it. Um, I'm concerned about that. If they do, then they're basically just going to slide down the ladder because I mean, I mean, it, I, I mean, you, if you if you underestimate the league, it, it, the, the, if you don't progress in this league, the 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 the, 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 the league will just like just like that will just it will just swallow you up and spit your spit your spit your bones back out. That's it. That's how brutal it is. One year you can just be contending for top four, you know, contending for top four, maybe contending for the premiership. Next year you've missed the finals altogether. It almost happened with the Bulldogs. It almost happened. With, they were almost happening with the Bulldogs. They were one minute away from not making finals after making the grand final the previous year. If it wasn't for Colin, it wasn't for Colin when flipping Jamie Elliott. Um, which. Uh, which yeah, which I'm still not happy about because obviously it obviously kicked the winning goal against freaking Essendon. Um, so so yeah, so I I I, I am confident. I think Frio that it, it, they're a bit interesting for me. They can, they either can go to the next level and could and be in the top and contend for top four again, or even be in the top four, or they can just slide out of the finals altogether. I think that they're, they're, they're a bit. I, I don't know how they get it, how I'll how I'll gauge them next year next year when that when that comes around. Um, so that's about it um, for it, for this for this review. So uh, like this video, uh, share, share this to, to anybody who is a Fremantle Dockers fan. Um, uh, in the comments down below. Uh, do uh, do uh, do you think, in your opinion, Luke Jackson? It, 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 Luke Jackson is he going to is he going to improve Fremantle or it, it, or is it or or, or not? Uh, I like to hear your your opinion. My opinion is I think he will. Um, but I like to hear your opinions down in the comments below. And one last thing, somewhere, somewhere down there, um, is. Is a big red button which is labelled subscribe. Um, until next time, guys. I'll see, I'll see you guys later. And wherever you may be, may the sun or the moon shine on you.